Okay. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. Well, I appreciate you taking some the time today to meet. Um, as I indicated in my email, I know that this is not typically a day when we would Zoom, but I felt really bad that we were losing the first half of this week um, because we wouldn't have really talked until probably like Wednesday at 1.15, right? Because we don't have any classes this week in person. So. so I just felt I wanted to reach out and just sort of touch base. And um, although I can't force you to share your, your cameras, it's awful nice to see faces. I'm, I'm not going to say you have to, of course, but if, if uh, if you're willing to do that, I appreciate that. So, John, thank you. Um, Sadie, hi. We'll be seeing each other in person next Wednesday. And, you know, the nice thing about the way that this course is going to go, I think, personally, because I did the same thing last fall, um, is I got a chance to get to know you and you got to know me because we saw each other, you know, during lab. Think about your courses where you're remote the entire time and you see your instructor virtually or your your other you know friends and colleagues in the class. It's just not the same thing, is it? I don't think anyway. It's nice to make that that physical connection, if nothing else, just to sit in the same room. So um, that I'm happy about. Um, So I thought maybe we could use this time and we don't need to go the entire you know, hour and 15 minutes just to um, field any questions you guys might have if you've had a chance to look at any of the stuff that I've posted on Blackboard. Um, I did post two Zoom recordings the other day. Um, that sort of went over the mechanics of the course, the grade, a little bit about myself, um, you know, how we were going to be doing the, the quizzes, both lecture and lab, uh, as well as the lab exams in the lab, right, during the lab time. That's a little bit different. Um, and then, of course, the other thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about is sort of what we had planned for lab this week, since we aren't meeting, uh, you know, person to person, face to face. We still have exercise two, I think, um, to do. So before I talk about lab, let me just um, ask you if you had any questions on the syllabus or what I might have said. Maybe you haven't even had a chance to look at those um, Zoom recordings. Um, and I'm happy to go over Blackboard, show you what's there if you haven't had a chance to go in and look. And I am recording this, so there's probably about nine or 10 people um, that aren't here today too that can just watch our little chat today. So anything you are wondering about, feel free to, to ask or comment on. Um, I just had a question about the book. Um, can we only get that in the school store? Um, I don't think you're restricted, Sadie, just to go through our bookstore. Okay. Um, I will say, that the lab manual is one that I've um, sort of customized for both semesters, AMP1 and AMP2. And unfortunately, my lab book cover has torn off. I've used it so darn much. And um, I, I can't show you what that looks like, but it, well, maybe I can, hang on. Actually, I do have an extra one sitting behind me. So here's what it looks like. And it's sort of an unconventional cover, right? Because um, it says Jamestown Community College, Cattaraugus County Campus. So um, I don't think, Sadie, you could go online and find this customized version. Yeah. Um, so I could probably find the one for the class, but for the lab, buy that through the school. 
that would be my recommendation. And I'll tell you what, I have really tried to keep costs down for you guys because I know how darn expensive books are. I really, really do. And so uh, I work with the publisher, which is um, McGraw-Hill Publishing, to try to you know, give you guys options. And one of those options is to purchase the hardcover text. And then there's, I think, um, a, a loose leaf version of this as well. And I'm trying to remember if I made a comment in one of my emails to you guys about that, or maybe a student asked me about it and I responded back to her. Yeah, I think that was the case. And I said, you know, these are the two options, hardcover or loose leaf combo pack where you get both of these together. And, and that's really what you might want to think about doing. But if you can find this cheaper, you know, go for it. It's basically the 15th edition yeah. of Holes um, Andy. Because I looked on Amazon, they're out of stock right now. So I was also wondering when you, like, we need the book by. Um, today. Okay, just make no, me. I, I, say that, I say that somewhat tongue in cheek, but we're, we're really getting into it now. I mean, you know, so as soon as you possibly can get it, you should. Um, I'll just go to the school store then. It's probably the easiest route because everywhere I've looked is out of stock. Did you check Chegg? Uh, yeah, but it didn't have a date yet, except for when it was going to come in because it's cheaper that way. Yeah. I think it's 70 compared to like one, like 113 or something. Yeah, and that's not insignificant, is it? Right. Yeah. Um, the, the question, of course, is you're saving yourself 30, 40 bucks, but you might not get the book for four weeks. And yeah. that's not going to be a good scenario either. So, yeah. Um, I, the only thing I can kind of say that might reassure you a little bit in having to pay maybe more than you, you, you know, might have paid is the fact that you're using both of these for both ANP1 and ANP2. So yeah, you're up fronting 200 plus bucks maybe. I'm not exactly sure what, what the uh, loose leaf combo pack is, but think about that as being spread over two semesters and then it becomes a little more palatable. It's still expensive, I know. So buy it then because I am taking AP2. So should I buy it or rent it? Yeah, good question. You wanna do nursing probably? Uh, physical therapy. Okay, yeah. So one thing that I always think about, whether you know I'm talking to you as a student or talking to myself, if I was gonna do PT, um, is would I think that having it as a reference down the road would be helpful? You know, um, because obviously in PT and OT, referring back to some of this stuff in AP, you know, could be could be beneficial down the road, in which case it's probably nice to have it. However, you know, a lot of this stuff you can get free and not have to even have a book. So you can access the information in other ways as well. Um, so it's really kind of a personal choice, I guess. Okay. Um, I always like to have, well, when I went to school, I don't know that even had, yeah, they had rentals probably. But I always, I always just buy a used book or 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 got a, got a book. I, I never, I don't think I ever rented. But some people do, you know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I got a question. The uh, book comes in a bundle, and that's what I purchased. So is that correct? And is that correct? And does it come like loose, or is it hard copied like that? Well, I, I don't know for sure, John. But I'm assuming if you buy the hard copy text bundled you're going to get what i'm showing you here oh, okay that's that's my assumption you can also get the loose leaf bundle which would be this and then i guess a, you know a, a shrink wrapped loose leaf sort of thing has anybody here gotten either of those maybe you guys can i share should be here that. today okay <laughs> she's driving you're driving down the highway i can tell with your window open can't quite hear you <laughs> i did i did get the bundle i had i got the um the lab book and the book together um i was able to find some different copies of the actual book on like a books 
but I wasn't able to find the lab book obviously by itself because right. if you like added it and everything yourself, I wasn't able to find that. But the majority of the books that I found were around the same price. So really it was honestly worth it to just get it through the bookstore. And did it come hard copy and then spiral ring? Yeah, I got I got the loose leaf one. You have to put it in a binder. That's the okay. only thing that can is kind of I, I thought it was kind of weird <laughs> to have it that way. Um, but yeah, I just put it, I think it's in a, a one and a half inch binder I put my book in and it fits perfectly. All right, good. Now, somebody last semester had the loose leaf and they said that obviously it was easier to lose pages in terms of them tearing out accidentally kind of thing. It wasn't like a huge deal, but it did happen to her and she found that to be sort of a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, you know, the one thing you could do, gosh, many moons ago when I was in college, you, you used to be able to buy these little round reinforcers yeah. where you used yeah. to put them on either side of the hole of each punch, you know? I mean, it was a pain in the butt to have to go through. You had, I, I did like six per page, right? Well, three on each side. And that would hold those in really good and it would, they would never tear out, but you gotta, you gotta put them on every page. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so that might be an option. You know, put your little brother to work, <laughs> make him do all of it, or, or your kids, or whatever. Um, it kind of kind of boils down to you know what you want to spend. Yeah. Okay, so um, I would I would say try to get both books as soon as you can. Um, because obviously we're, we're getting into the lab stuff this week with exercise two. And um, I've already posted the Zoom lectures for chapters one and three, which are the first two chapters that we're scheduled to look at. So, you know, you, you really will want to get a, a start on that as soon as you can. Yeah. No, I actually have. Go ahead. Hannah. I actually have a quick. Question. Um, my mom took your class like a year and a half ago, maybe, and she still has her anatomy textbook. Is that still current, like up to date? Because I just ordered the lab book. So Haley, is it the fifteenth or fourteenth edition that you have? Do you know? Um, let me look. It's the fourteenth. Um, I would say you could probably use that. Um, they okay. don't change a lot between editions other than they update what is referred to as the clinical application and from okay. science to technology boxes. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. In many of the chapters of the textbook, the authors will put together these kind of special interest pages. They're often you know colored like this one's in blue. This mm -hmm. is the the clinical application it says at the very top. And then there's another um, section called from science to technology. So let me see if I can find one of those real quick. Okay, it's also in blue. Okay. And what they'll do is they will kind of sometimes um, update those or maybe go to a totally different topic. So the mm -hmm. only thing that you need to be aware of is I, I could possibly ask you a question on the exam about the information presented in those particular, uh, we'll call them special interest boxes. Okay. But if you wanted to like borrow my book or you could go over into the library or the learning center where they have a copy of the 15th edition and you know, you could, mm -hmm. you know, as far as I'm concerned, you could even take my book and photocopy if you wanted to do that um, rather than buy, you know, the new book just to have the most updated you know, special interest sections, I don't think it's worth it. But okay. I just wanted to warn you wanted... about that. Okay, thank you. Sure. If you go, you know, back much beyond, say, the second or th so edition from the current one, then I, I grow a little more concerned about saying yes. But I think if you have the 14th, um, 
you know, or even 13th, as well as the, the you know, obviously the modern most up to date one until 15th, you should be okay. But just be aware of those those slight differences in the science to technology and cl clinical application sections. Good question. How about other questions? Um, I got another one. The uh, thirty dollars for the review class. Where do I pay that at? I think that just gets added to your to your bill, John, right? when you register. Oh. Yeah, I, I believe okay. I believe that's how that's done. And as long as you brought that up, um, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that session. I think a lot of you must be because a lot of people are registered for it. Um, We'll still plan to meet tomorrow at, I think it's 11.30, pretty sure, to 12.20. And so um, those review sessions are a chance for you to ask questions, so, you know, whether it relates to lecture or lab. Um, I don't typically have a, a formal lecture that I present during the review because in my mind, it's review um, and it's not lecture. Uh, I don't take, well, I, I will take attendance, but not to penalize you, but I have to keep track of that for our continuing education folks. Um, so it's more of a, you know, administrative thing. But if, if there's some Tuesdays that you don't come, it's no big deal. I'm not going to penalize you for it. There's no grade associated with the review. It's just an opportunity for you, again, to come with questions and for us to review stuff that we just talked about in, in lab or we'll talk about in lab or lecture. Um, so I really encourage people to come with questions. Um, so that's kind of how we do the review sessions. I'm certainly happy to lecture, but I'd like some guidance from you as to what's causing you angst and problems and such. Um, Other questions? Starfish, how is that, where is that system at? Starfish, you can access that, um, I believe from your, well, there's a number of different ways to get to it. You could go to the college website. Um, you can access it, I think, from your Blackboard page. Um, let me share my screen and see if I can, Show you that. Okay. Try this again. Okay. Do you see the Blackboard course shell? Yes. Okay. So here you can see email starfish. Oh, okay, I see it. Well, now this is this is my faculty page. I'm going to go into the student preview, and then I, we'll see what you will see when you go there. Um, and let's see if Starfish is listed here. Yeah, it is above, right next to the email. If you go back out to the home page, yeah. Uh, I can't do that. You can't see, it, yeah. But on my page, I can see where it says uh, Starfish. Okay. There it is right there. See it? Well, yeah, I'm back to the faculty, oh. my faculty page. So you have the same thing up here, apparently. You don't have faculty probably, do you? No. Yeah. Okay. So, John, you can get to it from your Blackboard page. You can also, um, I'm not sure if you're seeing me search a new. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so go to the college website, and then you can go to my JCC, and you'll see Starfish here. Okay. You can also access, um, you know, your your email, your Google account. Here's Blackboard. Here's Banner. This is a good a good place to bookmark or have instant access to some of this stuff. Um, the JCC alert. I talked about that in the um, Zoom presentation I recorded, right? So okay. if you want to get access to instant um, information regarding closures of the campus, you can sign up with JCC alert. We get a text. Uh, or 
uh, an email or a voicemail, I think, voice message. So yeah, this is where you can get to a lot of stuff. I don't use Starfish a whole heck of a lot, to be quite honest. Um, but you can use and should use this should you want to make an appointment to, to talk with me during office hours. And I mentioned, I think, that um, in the syllabus. So you go to Starfish. Um, you'll, you'll see um, I will be setting up my office hours soon if they're not already set up there. And then when you say, you know, register or make an appointment for a given day and a given time and put your name in, then I'll get an instant email saying, John wants to meet uh, on Monday at, you know, 11 o'clock or, or whatever. For those of you who've been at JCC now for uh, at least a semester or two, um, do your instructors use Starfish a lot or, or not so much? No, I've never seen it. I've, take, I've graduated. I, I'm a um, cross-register student. I've never seen Starfish before. Yeah, not all schools have it. So Sadie, you were shaking your head back and forth, so you haven't seen it. No, I never really used it. Only with my advisor once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the college adopted this about a year ago in an effort to uh, improve retention rates. So what I can do if I'm finding that, let's say you are struggling with the course, I can send you a little starfish notice um, and uh, put you into contact with folks that might be able to assist, say the learning center people or the library people or whatever. Um, and then there's also the option where if you ace an exam, I can send you uh, a kudos. Um, but like I said, I, I just don't use it a whole lot. I suppose I should more, um, but I just don't. Don't tell my dean that. No, I, I should use it more. Um, how many of you have gone in and watched either of those two? Okay, some of you have, John has. Um, I was looking for them. I can't find them. Okay, so let's find those. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Okay, do you see the Blackboard course shell? Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, so Sadie, you can get to the course Blackboard shell, right? Uh, yeah, I'm on there now. Okay, great. All right, so what I can do actually is again, go back to the student preview and this is sort of what you're probably seeing, right? I hope. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you, you obviously found the Zoom link because you're here. And if you go to content and then look for the Zoom meeting video recordings and lectures. And there you will see the first file, okay? And this is gonna have those two uh, recordings that I was referencing that I did um saturday and sunday okay i clicked on this earlier and it said nothing in folder but now it's there so oh huh okay so maybe it was just my computer i have no idea but now it's there okay great okay. um and then what we've got here obviously um would be some additional recordings that pertain to the first couple chapters we're, we're going to be looking at um now you might be wondering, well, why isn't chapter two listed here? Why are we jumping from one to three? Well, if you watched this, you know that I talked about how you're gonna be having a chemistry quiz on chapter two coming up in a couple of weeks. And that I was not going to post a formal lecture on chapter two. And so that's why that's not listed here. And this also brings up 
sort of the importance of getting the textbook as soon as you can, because you can begin to get into chapter two and get ready for this 30 point chemistry quiz coming up, I think in two weeks or so. Um, but my plan is to free up additional chapters as time goes on. So if you look at the schedule that we have right now, if you go to the syllabus, now I'll just kind of stop sharing for just a moment and hold this up so you can kind of see it, but you should probably copy uh, off the syllabus, print it off and, and have, have it to look at. So if you look here, we've got chapters one and three listed for this week, right? And then next week, We've got that devoted all to chapter three cells because it's a pretty important chapter. And then we start um, chapter four the following week. And then there's that chemistry quiz or chemistry exam I was mentioning a few moments ago. So next week I'll free up chapter four. So you have access to that, the Zoom recording lectures on that. I mean, I have them all done. I could release all 10 of them, but. Um, I just thought I'd kind of release them as time goes on. If, you, if you're really one that likes to look ahead and you want me to release additional chapter stuff, tell me and I'll, 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 I'll open it up and release it. But I just don't want to overwhelm you with it. Yeah, that's fine um, to not do that. I have classes like you would not believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, when I say release, I'm just saying making it available. You don't have to do it, it you know. You don't have to do chapter 19 tomorrow, right? That's not for another couple of months. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll plan to release it a week ahead of time. How's that? Yeah. Um, I see that some of these like they lag behind. So when we're when we're doing intro to <clears throat> when we're doing one and three, we're actually looking at two as well, correct? Well, that's exactly right. I don't have chapter two listed on the syllabus, but I mentioned to you, and I have in the syllabus, the fact that you have this chemistry exam coming up on chapter two. It's the only chapter that I haven't listed that you're going to be, you know, doing. That was my next question. Yeah. Yeah. So what what you ought to be starting to do is, you know, getting into chapter one certainly. And in the next couple of weeks, right, in preparation for the chemistry exam, you want to start reading chapter two. Yeah. Now, what I'm suggesting you consider doing is looking at the study objectives that I've also posted in the course shell. So let me go back to the Blackboard course shell under contents and you see where it says study objectives by chapter. You have that? Yep. Okay. And when you click on that, and I, and I talk about this in those first two video recordings, okay? So don't freak out and say, oh, I can't remember what he's telling me. All of this I went over. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is a list of all of the chapter objectives for the entire semester. Here's chapter one. Here's the chemistry chapter. There's chapter three and so on and so forth. So I think if I were you, as you prepare for that 30 point multiple choice chemistry, we'll call it a quiz because exam conjures up anxiety in students, right? So we'll call it, yeah, yeah we'll call it a quiz. Can we call all of them quizzes? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There'll be little quizzes and big quizzes. <laughs> Good. Okay. So the chemistry quiz, we'll call it a moderate, <laughs> medium-sized quiz, on the 10th of February, okay? So that's, that's what, two weeks from Thursday, Wednesday, is that right? Yeah, it yes. is. So two weeks from Wednesday, we have our 30 point, 30 multiple choice chemistry quiz during lab. Uh, as you prepare for that, I think a good way to do that is to get into the chapter, start reading it, and then use these objectives as sort of a general guideline. In fact, some people use these to develop a, a study packet, right? 
you can do whatever you want. I'm not saying you have to do a study packet or put together a big document on chapter two by answering these. But if, if you want to do that, you know, you, you could do that. These are the, the things that you need to kind of focus on. It's not a be all and end all list of, of material that you should know, but it, it's, a, it's a pretty good basic guideline. If you can you know, address these objectives, then you should be in good shape for that chemistry quiz. And don't forget, even though I'm not presenting you with the formal Zoom lecture on chapter two, like I am for all of the other chapters, still in there. we can still talk about this, right? We can talk about it during the review session. We can talk about it one-on-one -on -one during office hours. Um, we can even take part of a Wednesday class, a Zoom class. So don't feel like I'm throwing you to the wolves here, which is probably how you think I'm, I'm what I'm doing, but I'm not. Um, there's going to be ample time for you to ask questions if you're having issues. We can talk about that. But it's really the only chapter I sort of have you work on sort of on your own, more so than the other chapters where we, we go through it, you know, via the, the Zoom recordings. Lessons, we'll call them, PowerPoints. Okay. So I think it's certainly worthwhile um, being aware of these uh, study objectives and making use of them as you see fit. If, if you don't want to use them, you don't have to. It's totally up to you. Um, let me just go back again to the course shell for just a minute. Um, Obviously, here's the course syllabus, which again, you should print off and have a hard copy of with you, I think. The master course syllabus is not something you need to print off. It's something that we're mandated to put into all of our course shells. It's sort of like, as it says, a master course syllabus, no matter whether you're taking it at, in Olean or in Jamestown. Uh, when we teach a and one we have to cover these topics. So this gets, gets down to the specific sort of topics and that kind of thing. Here's the, the folder that, um, again, has all of the Zoom lectures for each of the chapters. And it'll also have any Zoom recordings that we make, like today's. Remember I said I was recording this for those that couldn't come today? Um, or even I could, I could record the review sessions and I could put those in there too if you wanted to you know, watch those again. I'm happy to do that. What I have to remember to do is to record them. Sometimes I, I start a class and I forget to record it. Um, I got a, a note in front of me here, don't forget to record. So I'll, I'll make sure I carry this with me or whatever and try to do that each time we get together. Um, here's all of the chapter PowerPoints. We talked about the study objectives. The lecture outlines, you can take a look at those and use those if you'd like. Um, it's just a basic outline of the chapters. This is a really important folder, which is why I put it in red. And again, I talk about this in those first two Zoom recordings. This is stuff that you need to make sure you're copying and bringing to lab each week. So let me open this up real quick. Um, there are some unlabeled figures that refer to different exercises. So if you wanna get some practice, you know, labeling, certain structures and let me just pull one up here to show you these are unlabeled diagrams from your lab book so you, you have already have these but if if after labeling these you want to you know have a little practice quiz that you want to do later um, you can if you want you can print off these unlabeled diagrams so I, I provide those um, and then here are some specific lab exercises. You know when we're going to be doing these because you'll, you'll have the lab schedule that you'll be looking at. And so you're going to want to bring these two handouts with you. Um, well, again, this is unlabeled. So this is not something you have to bring, I guess, to lab. But if you want to practice labeling different structures of the skin, you could do that. So uh, let's see, are these are these both. Yeah, these are both unlabeled diagrams. You don't need to bring those with you. 
to a lab. Um, let me go back here. Let me go to uh, back one step. Here we go. All right. So here's here's the lab exercises that we're going to be doing um, each week. Here's uh, 11, the skin model. This is what I want you to bring with you to lab when we do the skin. We're going to be looking at a model, and you're going to be asked to, to identify different structures of the skin model and put numbers next to these lines. And then I'll be providing you with an answer sheet so you can check your answers. Did you get the stratum corneum correct in terms of the identification number correct? Um, so this is the stuff that I really want you to, um, to bring with you. It's, it's in this folder, stuff to copy and bring to lab. You, don't, you do not need to bring these unlabeled figures. This is just for you to use as you see fit. So basically from this area down is what you want to print off and bring with you. Next week, we do a rat dissection. And there's a handout here that I want you to bring with you so you can identify different structures. Because there's not an exercise in the lab book that covers the rat dissection. Uh, when we get to the bones, we'll, we'll spend two weeks on bone identification. I want you to bring this bone list with you. It's about a I don't know, four or five page list of structures that we're going to be finding, looking for, and identifying. So I'm not going to be bringing these um, various handouts um, with me. You've got to bring those yourself. So I think probably what I would do if I were you is I would, I would start with um, the rat dissection diagrams and work my way on down. And I would literally click on each one of these and I'd print it off. And I would come into the lab and I'd get the three-hole punch and I'd punch those sheets and I put them into a cheap binder and I bring the binder with me to lab every Wednesday and you are good to go for the entire course. If you decide that's too much work, I'll just print it off right before we do the muscles. So there's four exercises here to print off for that day. I can guarantee you that the printer will be out of paper or it'll be jammed, or you won't get to school until five minutes before lab, or what have you. I can guarantee you something will come up. So do not procrastinate in terms of when you print these off, because I'm not going to be giving you these. And if you don't have them, you're going to be stuck for lab. You know, you're going to be in a sorry state. So I'd, I'd print them all off. Now, this folder says respiratory organs includes videos. Obviously, you can't print off a video, right? But there are some other uh, documents, and most of which are Word documents, that refer to models that we're going to be looking at. And you're going to be putting, again, numbers next to these structures that appear on the model. And then you can, we'll give you an answer key. You can check your, your answers with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. OK. I know there's a lot, and, and, and you know, there's a lot of stuff here. So, you know, maybe if you don't want to do it all at one fell swoop, do half of them or whatever. Just, I'm just warning you, I'm not bringing handouts for you. You got to bring them yourself. Um, the student study outline and answers, these are again designed to help you in learning the material, you can use them as you see fit. Let me just pick um, a chapter here. Here's, here's the chemistry chapter. Let's pull up the student study outline. And you can see it, it has a bunch of fill in the blanks, right? Compounds are, elements are, examples of elements are, um, the nucleus contains, electrons carry a blank charge. So after you kind of read over the chapter, or as you're reading the chapter, you can fill in those blanks if you want. And then if you um, go 
to the answers, okay, of chapter two, and open that up, it's going to have the answers to those blanks. Compounds are chemical combinations. The central portion of the atom is called the nucleus. Electrons carry a negative charge and that kind of thing. So all of those empty blanks that we saw earlier are, are filled in. Do you have to do this? No. But if you find that it's helpful, then you've, you've got it available to you. Okay, so those are the student study guide, stu student study outlines and answers by chapter. Um, I talked about the optional extra credit research paper. You can click on this, we've got a few guidelines on helping you with that. Um, when we get into the heart, cardiovascular system, we might refer to a couple of these things. Maggots and leeches make a comeback. This is an article that relates to the use of medicinal leeches. When we get into the blood chapter, we'll talk about coagulation and clotting. Um, but um, this is an interesting article that, that talks about use of leeches. Yeah, that goes back to the Middle Ages. They used to use medicinal leeches to help uh, clear up blood clots in, in people. And they do that still today, believe it or not. Who would ever think that they do? These, these leeches are really, really big. They're not the kind you find in a, in a river or a lake around here, which are ten, generally little guys. These, these things are wicked. No, I shouldn't say that. They're, they're, they're interesting. They're not bad. But they're big. They gross people out when you see them. Um, and then there are some additional uh, links here, some videos related to A&P. And I'll tell you right off the bat, um, when you open this Word document up, there are a list of um, Gunther von Hagen's videos, they're called, right? I, I can't really begin to describe what these are. You, you've got to go in and check these out. They're really interesting. I will just simply say, or ask you a question, has anybody ever heard of Body Worlds? It's a exhibit that travels around the world. There are some in the United States. Yeah. There are also yeah. in other countries, too. And in Body Worlds, and it was up in the Buffalo Museum of Science about eight years ago. It was up in Toronto at their museum about 10 years ago. Um, I took a couple school, a couple bus loads of A&P students to the one in Buffalo when it was here. And it's amazing. They have these, these cadavers that they've preserved and you can study the musculature, you can study the skeletal system. They had, they had a woman who was pregnant uh, and, and, they, and they showed the fetus. They had cut open and opened up the musculature of her abdomen and you can see the fetus inside. I mean, it sounds, sounds kind of creepy, but it's done very, uh, it's very artistic. It's, very, it's done very um, with a sense of a respect. It's just absolutely the most amazing thing. If you ever get a chance to go to any Body Worlds exhibit, go and they're kind of expensive, but it's worth going. Anyway, this guy, Gunther von Hagens, is sort of the guy that's perfected this plastin plastination technique, it's called, to preserve uh, human tissue without, a, without it going bad, basically. So really, really cool stuff. Check it out. It's, it's kind of creepy, but it's really interesting. Um, and then this link right here, this YouTube link, has a ton of a and videos. I mean, there are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens. And so check it out. Really, really, really excellent. And also Sam Webster has a lot of really good a and videos. And if you guys ever come across stuff that you think would be helpful to other students, whether it's like a coloring book you come across or a video or, or whatever it might be, let me know and I'll, I'll add to our, to our list. There's just a ton of good stuff out there. There's a lot of junk out there too, as we know, but it's a lot of good stuff. And then there's some practice websites here too, um, where you can practice, uh, you know, learning the bones, learning the musculature, 
um, just a variety of, of different interesting sites to, to check out if you're interested. So that's a quick synopsis of the Blackboard course shell. Anybody have any questions on any of that? The research paper. Yep. Um, right now I'm taking medical coding and billing. I know later that I'm gonna have to do a paper. Can you double dip? No. <laughs> Can I do that? No. Okay. But with that being said, I could still, you, you want us to pick a topic, something that we cover. Well, no, I, I, it has to pertain to one of the organ systems or one of the general topics that we cover in AMP1. Okay, so can uh, it be the lungs? Well, sure, we're doing respiratory system. Yeah, yeah respiratory. But, but when you say lungs, you know, you can't do a paper on lungs. You've got to no. be more specific in terms of what Asthma. is the focus of the paper, you know? Asthma and lungs. Okay, yeah, you could do that. Okay. And, and you really should talk to me about what topic you, you are going to decide on. Yeah, I know I'm going to decide on that because um, when you're looking at medical coding and how uh, the African-American community has been impacted by asthma and the conditions they're in, it's large, so. Yeah, that, that'd be fine topic, John, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and certainly we can talk more about that paper as we kind of get into the course. I will try to throw out ideas or possible good topics because sometimes students don't really know what to do. So I have no problem throwing out thoughts, okay. but, but you need to decide, you know, what what do you want to do? I'm not going to assign you a topic. It's extra credit, and uh, but I can kind of give you some feedback. Be happy to do that. To do that. Okay. Um, I'm just curious who who is iPad? Uh, who are my you? name. Yeah, my name is Myvi. Got you, Myvi. Thank you. Yeah. How how is that iPad working for you in terms of Blackboard working fine? Yeah, it's working fine because I I want to use my laptop, but it uh, disconnects on with the Wi-Fi, so I uh -huh. I have to use my my iPad. Great. Yeah. I just got an iPad Pro for Christmas, and <laughs> it is really an amazing device. Yeah, that's what uh, what I got. Good. Well, yeah. we'll have to, we'll have to talk. You can you can tell me some tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just use it, uh, so mm -hmm. I don't know much about it. Yeah, it can do some amazing things. Thank. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have the question to uh, for to come back to the campus because we have the in person class. Mm -hmm. So do, do, will we meet in this week or next week? No, no in-person classes this week at all. So oh. we will not be meeting face-to-face -face on campus until a week from Wednesday, which will be uh, February 3rd. So if you have class on campus next week, Monday, then obviously you need to come. But as far as our course goes, we, we will not be meeting face-to-face -face for lecture because we're Zooming on Wednesdays, right? 1.15 to 2.30. Um, Monday is the online part of the course where you have time to look at the, the textbook, to read over the chapters, to work on the study objectives, to get geared up for the chemistry quiz, to review for any lab quiz we have coming up. You know, that's stuff you're doing at home on Mondays. Okay. So for lecture, we will not be meeting face-to-face -face at all. For lab, we'll be meeting on Wednesdays from 9 to 11.45. Now, even though I, you know, I said we're not meeting face to face for lecture, most of you, most all of you, I think, all of you, in fact, who are taking lecture 
are in lab. So if you have questions you want to ask in lab about lecture stuff, we can talk about that too, if we have time. I mean, lab is focused on lab, but I'm here and, you know, we can talk about lecture stuff outside of lab or, or whatever. Okay, so you mean that like we will meet in person face to face just on Wednesday every week? Yeah. But for the letter, we just meet on Zoom. Correct. Right? That's right. Yes. And it entire of this course? For the entire course for lecture, oh. for lecture, we're meeting 115 to 230 on Wednesdays via Zoom. Oh, um, right. yeah. But for the lab, we go in person, right? That's right. Okay. Yep. yep. Thank you. Sure. Now, here's a question or a comment that I just thought about. Now, for some of you that live maybe some distance from campus, you may be wondering, okay, my lab goes to 1145, we'll just call it 12 o'clock, but I have an hour drive. And I don't know if you do, but let's say you do. If you're worried about getting home in time to Zoom at 115, you theoretically could find a computer on campus and Zoom yeah. afterwards as well. Does that make sense? Or if you have a laptop, you could do Wi-Fi and Zoom from, from school or, or wherever. Yeah. yeah. And so next week when we meet uh, in campus, do we have to do some tests for the COVID test or something? Um, Oh, um, I, I believe what they're going to do, uh, last semester, when you came into the building, there was a table manned by um, somebody who asked you to fill out a form, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you got a bracelet, a colored bracelet, right, paper? Yeah. I take uh, I took our classes online last semester, so that's why I I really don't know. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, that's a good question. Um, I'll have to find out the answer to that. I, I just you you may have to stop at another building. I'm not sure if there'll be somebody in our building or whether they will take they will suggest you go to a different building on campus mm. to fill out a, a questionnaire so that we know you don't have a fever and you're okay to come to class. Mm. Um, let me find out information and I'll send everybody an email. Um, I, I got an email go from, okay, sorry. Um, I got an email from the school and um, it said like, if we have any in-person classes to get tested three days before we come to the campus, or we could have the option of pool testing, as well as the screening tables on campus. Okay. So I have a test on Friday because I have a class on Monday. Where do you get your test, Sadie? Um, I looked up Cat County, like COVID testing, and then I signed up online and then um, you sign up online and then I got a call today and then did my appointment this morning. And where's that test at? The health department or where? Um, for me, because I live in Cat County, it's in Allegheny. Yeah. At, um, it's like 37.99 nine mile. Oh. Well, you could just do the screening at school, right? I'm pretty sure. And if you do the screening, then you can like be put in for like poll testing, I think. Yeah, just do the screening at school. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you have to go out and actually get a test, but in that email that they did send, there was a whole bunch of information on like, I yeah. think you have to fill out a form like online before you come in. Yeah. yeah. I think the link was right in the email. Mm -hmm. Can you do that form on your phone? Yeah, you should be able to. If you just log into your email, like your JCC email, 
No. It should just click the link and pop right up. Okay. Yep. I, I know for faculty, I have an app on my phone that I have to fill out, you know, like um, name, supervisor, do you have a fever? Do you have any of these symptoms? And if the answer is no, then you can you can come to, to campus. I didn't know if they had something similar for students or not. Um, so, I just don't know what the college sent out to you guys, but apparently they did send some information about what you need to do to have clearance so you can come face to face. So my V, are you are you okay with knowing what to do? Yeah, I think I will uh, go to the website and look in at that. Thank okay. you. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those unfortunate things that we all have to be mindful of. And when you do come next Wednesday, um, we're going to be in room 204, not room 203, which was listed initially on the syllabus. I did change that. And I, I noticed that when I was recording the, the video. But it's room 204. It's on the second floor of the Allied Health and Science Center, right off of North Union Street here in Olean. So I would just, you know, try to maybe get here a few minutes early this coming Wednesday or a week from Wednesday so that you kind of know where the room is and you kind of know what the process is if you have to fill out any forms or what have you. Uh, I just think it might pay to, to get, get here a little early. Um, so yeah, just same room. Yep. It's, it's 204. It's right across the room or the hall rather from the biology lab. We will not be in the biology lab. We're, in, we're across the hall. 204. I actually do have a quick question. Yeah. So is the library open to like sit in? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I actually do have an hour drive there. <laughs> so that was my question. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I included the library hours, Haley, in the syllabus. Okay. Um, I can tell you real quick here, too. Let me look. Library hours. Monday through Thursday, eight to four. Okay, right? perfect. Yeah, so that should be fine. And then um, we have our learning center also in the same building as the library. And I'm not sure if they have any computers in there. They, they may, I, but, but the library should. What I would do, Haley, is I would just go over there, you know, um, when you're on campus and check things out. Okay, yeah. because I just don't want to be late just because I had to drive all the way home. And yeah. I can always bring my own laptop and sit in there. And Yeah, have, have, you, have your earbuds connected so, so, you know, anybody who's in the library is not, you know, hearing the lecture or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And if, if the weather's at all iffy, you know, it might take you longer than an hour to get home. So, you know, play it by ear, see what you want to do. Stay for the Zoom lectures and go home afterwards, you know. Um, um, I have one more question. When you do the, the letter, do you record it on, on Zoom and you post it on Blackboard? Yes, I will. Re I will we'll try to record all of our meetings, like we're having now, um, as well as for the review sessions, and I will post them in Blackboard. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I usually uh, use my phone to recording. So if you're not recording, I will ask you the permission to do that. So. Yeah, not a problem. You can still do that if you would like to do that, but I will have, I will have these recordings available for you to watch to, uh, on your phone or on your laptop or wherever. Yes, that's great. Thank you. You bet. I will get into the habit of, of just recording everything, and then I'll I'll try to put a heading on there maybe by the date, 
of the recording or you know put review session February 3rd or whatever it is so it's easier for you to kind of maybe find what you might be looking for if you, if you missed review or you want to go back and listen to what we talked about today or what have you yeah great question guys yeah See, you're getting good with an iPad. You know where the where the thumbs up is and everything. You're you're good. Um, we got about 15 minutes, you know, left. Um, are there other comments, questions? Um, anything you'd like to ask about? So we got a quiz on the third and the tenth, correct? Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about exercise two that we have scheduled for this week according to the lab schedule. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is entitled Body Organization and Terminology. So what I would like you to do, your assignment for lab this week is to get into this exercise in the lab book. And when you get into this, you will find that it corresponds to a section of chapter one in the textbook. So there's a little bit of overlap here between lecture and lab. So if, if you go to the lecture book, you see there's a section entitled Organization of the Human Body. Okay. And here they talk about body cavities and membranes. There's a couple of diagrams. And then they talk about some cross sections or transverse sections through different parts of the body and pointing out different organs and different, different membranes that line the cavity or line the organ. And then there's um, another section entitled Anatomical Terminology. This is in chapter one, toward the back. And they have a, a bunch of different diagrams that relate to planes and different kinds of sections, and different terms to describe how sections can be made. And then there's additional uh, regional terms to describe different quadrants of the body. And finally, at the very end, there are terms that describe different structures on both the anterior and posterior surfaces. This is basically what exercise two in the lab book covers. And so you can reference chapter one information and you can begin to fill out some of these figures. You might remember this one was, I showed you just a few moments ago showing different cavities of the body. This is a cross section in the thoracic region, pointing out different sorts of membranes that you're gonna be learning about. Um, and so there are a variety of diagrams, they're the very same shown in chapter one, that you're gonna to wanna to begin to label and begin to learn the different terms. Now, this exercise is chock full of new words for you. It's like learning a new language. And so it can be a little bit overwhelming and a little daunting to try to, to learn all these terms. Um, and so, you know, flash, flashcards can be a good way to learn them. Um, it takes a long time to make up flashcards, but I, I can think of no better exercise where flashcards would be helpful. Um, but when you, when you study the human body, and whether you're going into nursing or physical therapy or occupational therapy or veterinary studies or whatever it might be, you know, you're going to have to learn the lingo. And uh, it, it's daunting at first. It's, it's learning a new language. It's like learning Spanish or French or English. If you're, if you're Russian, English is tough. You know, if you're English, Russian is really tough to learn. So you're going to struggle with the terms and the terminology and the sheer amount of information that I am kind of throwing at you at first. But the more you work with it, the better you get. Um, but you got to start somewhere. 
So I am going to, again, expect that you will get into exercise two of the lab manual, that you'll begin to fill out the diagrams, the figures shown, and you can reference and should be referencing the textbook to, to help you with those different terms. And then what you're gonna find in the back of every lab exercise is what they call a lab report. Now, I'm not asking you to turn this into me, okay? So this is not something you're gonna turn in, but if you look at the lab report, it has a variety of questions. Here's a couple that are matching, right? to test your knowledge on the material presented in that exercise. So there's a variety of different sorts of questions in the very back of exercise two in the lab report. And um, I wouldn't worry about the critical thinking application <coughs> questions, but I think any of the matching would be good. Any of the, of the um, uh, fill in the blank, um, sort of questions would be really, really good to do. When we get together next week in lab, I'm going to show you where you can go to get the answers to these lab report questions and where you can go to get the answers to the figures. We have some folders in the back of the lab, some hard, hard copy folders that you can pull out and you can go right to exercise two and look in there to find those answers, whether they're the figures or for the questions in the back in the lab report. So there's the, the physical answer key, if you will, uh, in the folders in the bio lab or in the, the room we're going to be in, 204. It's not the bio lab. The other thing that I wanted to let you know too, if you go to Blackboard, you'll see where it says, uh, maybe I have to free it up. Hang on one second here. I will provide you with the answer key online as well. Hang on one second. Let me go back here. Let's see, where is the answer key? Okay. All right, here you go. All right, let me come back, share the screen. If you go to the folder that's entitled Stuff to Copy and Bring to Lab Each Week, do you all see that? And then here it says answers to lab report questions from lab manual. Here is the same thing I was describing that we have as hard copy folders in the bio lab. So if you, if you wanna check these out at home, you can go online and, and get the answers here too for all of the exercises. So here's the various answers for the different figures. And then here's the answers for the lab report for exercise two. And so I don't ask you to turn that in to me, but I think it's a really good way of learning the material in these lab exercises, whether it, it means labeling structures or referring to the questions in the back in the lab report sections. This is sort of what the quizzes will be like. If you can answer those questions in the lab report, then you should be in good shape for the quizzes, the lab quizzes. So, so back to John's question a minute ago, and that is, you know, what's coming up in terms of quizzes? Well, on the 3rd of February, which is a week from Wednesday, right? If you look at the lab schedule, you will see it says lecture quiz one over week two. And then you'll see it indicates that we have a lab quiz as well. This little red asterisk here that I've kind of highlighted in, in green. These, these mean lab quizzes. Okay. So you've got a double whammy coming up on Wednesday of next week. You've got 
conduct a lab quiz over exercise two, which we talked about a moment ago, right? That covers body organization and terminology. It's gonna be a 10 point quiz. And then you've also got a short lecture quiz over the stuff we will have been learning about in chapters one and three. Now, I'm not gonna put all of chapter three on that first lecture quiz because we won't be done with that chapter by next Wednesday. We'll be through most of it, but not all of it. Because if you look on the lecture schedule, we've got all next week devoted to chapter three, right? Part of this week and all of next week is chapter three. So I certainly don't expect you're gonna know all of chapter three by next Wednesday, the third. So we should talk a little bit about how much of chapter three is gonna be on that lecture quiz. And I was thinking when we meet on Wednesday, we can, we can talk about that. So let's not, let's not worry about that right now, but you can bet chapter one is gonna be Definitely on that lecture quiz. On my syllabus, yep. I don't have where it has the green asterisks. Well, you have the lecture schedule there, right? Oh, that's the. It says lecture. Oh, this one. one second, of... line, second line from the top. Does, does it say tentative lecture schedule? Second line? Yeah. Uh, yeah, all lecture quizzes. Yeah, it says tentative lecture, yes. Okay, so find the lab schedule. I got the lab one. All right, and on the lab one, it tells you when the lab quizzes are. Yeah. That have the little red, red oh, asterisk. Oh, I see it, I see it. Okay, I see it's chapter two is done over again. All right. I so what, what I tried to do, and I know it's a little confusing, is I tried to give you in yellow what we're doing that relates to lecture quizzes or lecture exams. And the rest of the material there in green and in red asterisks indicate what we're doing as it relates to lab quizzes or lab practicals, whatever it might be. So just, just take some time and look this over. I think it'll make more sense if you just kind of study it, but don't be afraid to ask questions too. It's gonna to take just a little bit of time for us to get used to the system and how we're gonna do it. It's gonna just take a little bit of time, but we'll, we'll, you'll get it figured out. We'll, we'll get through it. Uh, so again, back to lab stuff. Um, by, by next Wednesday, uh, when we get together, we've got that first lab quiz over exercise two, body organization and terminology. So that's something you got to get started on. If we had met this week and you did not have your lab book, I would have provided you with a hard copy of this exercise. But we're not meeting, unfortunately. And that's it kind of bugs me that we're not, but I can't control anything about that. I wish we were, because some of you probably don't have your lab books yet. I wish I could fix that. I don't know what to do. Um, that's why it's important to get the lab book, you know, soon, as soon as you can, and also get the lecture book because we, we've got that first lecture quiz a week from Wednesday too. So, so you got to try to get this stuff as soon as you can. Um, for the lab book, and the um, other book, can I pick it up in person at the bookstore in Olean? No, they won't let us. I tried no, that. No, I don't think you can. Um, um, can you at the Jamestown campus? Because um, it says like the North Hillside and then the West Hillside. Those are the, the dormitories, I think, in Jamestown. I don't know the answer to that. I, I guess I would call the bookstore. There should be a bookstore number. It's probably the Jamestown bookstore, or maybe there's an only bookstore number. I don't know. And ask them. I just don't know, Sadie. I wish I could answer your question. Okay. I my sense is that 
as John said, I don't know. I shouldn't say. I I just don't know. I I think they were trying to ship them, but but I don't know yeah. if they're. I think last semester they were. And this might have been. I don't know. They bring hard copies over here. People can get them at the bookstore starting next week. You, you just need to ask the, them at the bookstore folks what what's going on. I just don't know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. Other questions, comments? We'll still plan to get together tomorrow for our review at 1130. And we can continue this conversation if you have other questions too. Um, OK. All right. All right, very good. I will, uh, again, um, post this recording on Blackboard. It's going to take uh, you know probably 20 minutes for this to get all uploaded and stuff such so don't expect to see it right away but before i leave school i'm at work today um, i will make sure it's up and posted and um i will see some of you maybe tomorrow but i'll see everybody wednesday at 1 15 on zoom <laughs> okay guys yeah. all right have a good rest of the day yeah me too thank you thank you you bet bye <laughs>